sinister stories. On the outskirts of Millersville, a quaint town enveloped in the hues of autumn, a mysterious shop materialized just as the sun dipped below the horizon on Halloween night. Its weathered sign swung in the chilly breeze, declaring it as Halloween Mysteries Costume Emporium. Intrigued, a group of friends, Sarah, Jake, Nicole, and Kevin, discovered the peculiar shop during their annual Halloween night escapade of last-minute costume shopping. The friends, adorned in their usual mix of creative and pop culture-inspired costumes, approached the dimly lit entrance. Its creaky door opened with a haunting melody, and the scent of ancient fabrics filled the air. The shop was like a hidden passage to another realm, a place not just selling costumes, but offering a glimpse into the supernatural. As they browsed through racks of intricate costumes, they couldn't help but marvel at the craftsmanship of each garment. At the back of the shop, an old man with eyes that held ancient secrets observed their every move. Choose wisely, young ones, he rasped, his voice echoing through the dimly lit space. For on this sacred night, the costumes may choose you. Undeterred by the cryptic warning, the friends laughed it off as part of the immersive experience. Each selected a costume that resonated with their Halloween spirit. Sarah chose the regal attire of a medieval queen. Jake donned the guise of a suave vampire. Nicole became a whimsical fairy, and Kevin transformed into a formidable werewolf. As the clock neared 11, they exited the costume shop, now cloaked in the mystique of their chosen characters. Little did they know, the enchantment of the costumes was far from superficial. The first inkling of the curse emerged when the clock tower chimed 12. The moon, veiled by thick clouds, cast an eerie glow upon the town square. Shadows danced where there should be none, and the distant hooting of an owl was accompanied by something more mischievous. Sarah, now clad in her queenly regalia, felt an unusual weight to her crown. It wasn't the plastic prop she adorned. It was a golden circlet, solid and authentic. The others, too, noticed peculiar changes. Jake's teeth felt unnaturally sharp. Nicole discovered ethereal wings sprouting from her back, and Kevin found his hands morphing into fearsome claws. The group soon realized the curse was more than a mere aesthetic alteration. They were becoming the characters they had chosen. Panic set in as they grappled with their new abilities and instincts. Sarah, now a queen, felt an unexplainable desire for power and control. Jake, the vampire, craved the taste of blood. Nicole, the fairy, found herself drawn to the wild places, and Kevin, the werewolf, was overcome by a primal urge to hunt. As the night unfolded, their transformations accelerated. The curse wasn't just altering their appearances, it was rewriting their very essence. The boundaries between reality and fantasy blurred, and the friends struggled to maintain their humanity. They soon discovered that this cursed town was now inhabited by nightmarish creatures birthed from the depths of their own fears. The werewolf, now unable to control his predatory instincts, became the terror stalking the night. The vampire, thirsting for blood, sought unsuspecting victims. The fairy, connected to the primal forces of nature, became an embodiment of chaos. And the queen, driven by a hunger for power, sought to control the cursed realm. The night became a battleground for their souls as they faced not only the external horrors, but also the internal demons brought to life by the cursed costumes. Betrayal, fear, desire, each emotion manifested as a monstrous entity seeking to consume them. They no longer who they used to be, but uncontrollable killing machines, or a fairy causing non-stop chaos, or queen controlling the minds of a horde of unsuspecting victims. With a shred of humanity still intact, they each held on with a glimmer of home that this nightmare would end. It seemed like the night would never end, though, as the group separated to cause their own new forms of destruction. The fairy caused numerous accidents around the town, some so deadly it cost the lives of the innocent. The queen took control of people's minds and had to commit unspeakable acts to themselves and others. As the first light of dawn approached, the friends, battered and exhausted, stood together in the now silent town square. The friends, released from the curse, reverted to their original forms. The queen's crown turned to plastic, the vampire's teeth back to normal, the fairy's wings disappeared, and the werewolf's claws retracted. They stared at each other, 
the memories of the night echoing in their minds, the tears flowing from their eyes for knowing the horrors they have committed. As the first rays of sunlight touched the horizon, the cursed costumes discarded in the now-closed costume shop, the experience, though harrowing. The cursed Halloween night became a haunting memory, a tale they would never tell anyone. Now understanding the warning of the old man should never be ignored. And for this group, Halloween would be met with caution rather than curiosity. Joanna's fascination with peering into the lives of others had always been a peculiar quirk. As Halloween approached, her anticipation heightened. The holiday presented a golden opportunity to indulge in her harmless, voyeuristic tendencies under the guise of trick-or-treating. As the years went by, Joanna transitioned from a candy-seeking child to a responsible teenager, yet her love for the secretive glimpses into others' lives remained. This year, she decided to take her younger sister, Lily, trick-or-treating. It was an innocent way for Joanna to continue her annual ritual while enjoying the merriment of Halloween through Lily's eyes. Their journey through the neighborhood was punctuated by giggles, pumpkin decorations, and the excitement of discovering which houses were hosting Halloween parties. As they neared the end of their route, a particular house caught Joanna's attention. Its lights were off, and there was no candy set outside for eager trick-or-treaters. Outraged by this apparent breach of Halloween spirit, Joanna and Lily playfully knocked on the door, expecting no response. To their surprise, the door creaked open, revealing a mysterious figure in a ghastly mask and dark clothing. Ignoring the unsettling atmosphere, the girls cheerfully declared, Trick or treat! The figure tilted its head, a singular hand raised in a silent request for patience, then disappeared inside. Intrigued, Joanna took a moment to peer into the dimly lit house. Through the narrow opening, she witnessed what appeared to be another figure dragging a body up the stairs. The door swung back open and the original figure returned, handing each girl a dollar before abruptly closing the door. Bewildered, they chalked it up to an elaborate Halloween prank. But as they walked away, Joanna couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Returning home, she called her best friend Becky to share the bizarre encounter. Becky dismissed it as an elaborate Halloween stunt, typical of the holiday. Joanna, however, couldn't shake the image of what she thought she saw through the partially open door. Intrigued and fueled by the desire to prove her fears wrong, Joanna persuaded Becky to investigate the mysterious house with her. Returning to the darkened residence, they found it seemingly empty. Undeterred, they decided to peek through the windows, only to discover each one barred with metal. Their only point of entry was a doggy door. The girls hesitated, but fueled by curiosity, entered the house cautiously. The kitchen served as their silent entry point, and as they heard a noise upstairs, they quietly tiptoed through the shadows. A sudden commotion above spurred them to hide in a closet, where they witnessed two figures descending the stairs. The same masked individual who had opened the door earlier and another companion. The girls were both horrified and mystified by their actions. When the two figures left, Joanna and Becky explored the house, only to find it seemingly vacant. As they discovered even more unsettling scenes, their apprehension grew. Their fear peaked when returning to the hallway, they saw the two figures returning with a rolled up blanket. The figures left again, providing the girls an opportunity to escape. Frantically seeking another exit, they stumbled upon a gruesome bedroom filled with blood and body parts. The realization hit them like a tidal wave. These were not decorations. They were the remnants of something horrifying. As they hid in a neighboring closet, the figures returned dragging a living person. The girls, paralyzed with fear, witnessed the gruesome act unfold before their eyes. The air was thick with terror and tears flowed freely. When the figures left, the girls, desperate to escape, attempted to find another way out, but were confronted with even more nightmarish scenes. Their screams caught the attention of the figures, who apprehended them and threw them into a room filled with corpses. Joanna, overwhelmed with terror, fainted. 
When she regained consciousness, the surroundings were inexplicably normal. The blood, bodies, and horror were gone. Confused and traumatized, Joanna ran home and called the police, leading them to the house. To her dismay, the police found nothing. Becky was missing, and the house showed no signs of the macabre scenes Joanna described. In her desperation, Joanna questioned her sanity. Had it all been a hallucination? As the police continued the search for Becky, Joanna grappled with the possibility that her obsession with glimpsing into others' lives had cost her the life of her best friend. The unknown was now infinitely preferable to the horrors that Joanna believed she had witnessed. In the dark echoes of that Halloween night, Joanna was left with the chilling realization that some secrets were better left undiscovered, and some horrors were better left unexplored.